Today, what we're gonna be making is takoyaki. Takoyaki without taco. All right, so for our ingredients, what we're gonna be using today is a little bit of agedama or tenkas, which are these little fried dough balls. A little bit of aosako, which is dried seaweed. Aonori is another thing that you can use. We have some beni shoga right there, which is pickled ginger. And here we have about two cups of cake flour and then about three cups of water. We have some dashi no moto right here. We're gonna be using about a teaspoon of that. And then we're also going to be throwing in about a teaspoon of hacho miso. Uh, here we have maitake. We're not going to use all of it, maybe about half. We're going to go ahead and saute it on the stove and caramelize it slightly before adding it in. A few stalks of green onion, a little bit of corn. We also have some olive oil and sesame oil, probably about three tablespoons of olive oil and about a teaspoon of sesame oil. And then here we have our takoyaki pan. So those are all of our ingredients for the takoyaki that we're going to be making. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is uh, cooking the uh, maitake on the stove to get them browned and slightly caramelized. It's going to help get, to give it a nice texture and uh, a little bit of flavor as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this up into small pieces. We're not going to use all of it, uh, maybe about half. Um, we're just going to go ahead and saute it in some of this olive oil sesame oil mixture that we're going to be using as well for the takoyaki. So while this is going, we can go ahead and put all the ingredients together for the um, batter, the kiji. That's the Japanese term for batter, which we're going to be making with all of these uh, other ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these apart. If you don't have maitake, you can also use shiitake or um, your other, I guess, favorite mushroom of choice. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cook that. Meanwhile, we can go ahead and get all of these other things started. So this, these are some of our toppings here, the benishvoga, the agedama, as well as the aosako. And then uh, we're gonna be mixing the flour here, cake flour with about a teaspoon of dashi no moto and then a teaspoon of miso paste, which is gonna help to give it a nice, rich and delicate flavor. Alternatives, if you don't want to use dashi no moto or miso paste, you can also use shio koji or shoyu koji or nothing at all. And then that's going to be a little bit more bland. Uh, so those are some of my suggestions. I'd be curious if you use anything else to flavor or season your takoyaki batter. Let me know in the comments below right now. Okay, so the onions are good to go. This corn I have microwaved for about three minutes, so it's, it's mostly cooked. We're gonna go ahead and get off these kernels. We're not gonna use all of it, um, but just a little bit to add some flavor and texture. So we'll just do that, that little bit for now. You can save this for something else. So what we're gonna do now is mix in some of the miso paste. We're just gonna put in about a teaspoon in here. Don't worry if it doesn't melt and then about a teaspoon of dashi no moto. It's gonna to help to give it a nice flavor. And then we're gonna go ahead and stir and then combine everything in here. This is gonna be our batter. <laughs> That's our little nugget of miso right here. So here we are gonna be using, I forgot the secret ingredients. It's not so secret. Uh, if you have cooked a lot of uh, chickpeas, but this is aquafaba, which is known as chickpea juice. And uh, we're gonna be using a few tablespoons here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's about two eggs worth, roughly. And we're gonna go ahead and combine that in here and then whisk everything together. So 
So if you can, you might want to use a little bit of a larger bowl than this. But if you saw my other video, you may have noticed that I lost my glass Pyrex bowl. So sad. Make sure to break up that little piece of miso so you can have an even flavoring throughout your takoyaki. And don't worry if there's a few little clumps, but you want to get most of the big clumps out. And I'm just going to actually use my immersion whisk. Oh, saw that little nugget of miso in there. We got to get that one out. Okay, I think that looks good. So now what we can do is go, we can go ahead and preheat our takoyaki pan. Careful. It will get hot. And since most of these are going to be Teflon coated, you want to be careful not to use any sort of metal utensils. So I have some uh, wadibash here. Uh, this is just bamboo. And then we're gonna go ahead and make some space. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a little bit of olive oil, sesame oil, the little mixture that I made into each of these. It's gonna help to give it a nice crust. So some, some of these sets, if uh, you get them, um, they might include a little brush for you to use uh, to oil everything, as well as a little pick. Um, but these are missing today. So um, <clears throat> while this gets heated, um, what we're going to do is just cover, we're going to ladle some of the uh, kiji or the batter into this little section. It's going to cover the entire surface, and then we're going to top it with some of the agadama or tenkasu, as well as the aosako, and then some of the benishoga, some of the... Uh, green onions and then we're also going to put in some corn in one batch and then a second batch it's going to be the maitake so this is looking good so nice and brown slightly which is what we were going for so i'm going to go ahead and remove this from the heat and then let it cool slightly so we can cut it on our cutting board and then go ahead and get our ladle ready here Just making sure that there's no clumps. I'll just blend it. Clumps are gone. This thing heats up pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of this over. Let's go ahead and get this combined. And once you've done your first batch, your second and third batches will go much quicker. So as you uh, 
put the toppings on the takoyaki, you're going to notice that it's starting to cook. And what you can do um, is go ahead and cut the um, pieces, cut around the uh, mold so you can sort of flip them over easily. So I usually try to carve them out. It doesn't need to be perfect, um, but it does help when you're trying to flip them over and finish the cooking. And then try not to put too much of the topping over so that when you flip it, it's going to actually form a ball. Usually it's better to put a little bit less than too much. I'm gonna try to uh, put the um, residual dough, the overflow, into each of the uh, little pockets so that it's gonna form a nice little um, round shaped ball. And you'll know when it's ready to flip because it's gonna be a little bit more cohesive than it is right now. It's not quite cohesive. So give it a couple minutes. Depending on how strong your burner is, you may or may not need to wait as long. Do do do. Smells yummy. So for toppings, um, I put some of this in because I like the flavor. You can uh, put this as a topping. Of course, you can put ketchup, okonomiyaki sauce, uh, chuno sauce, which is similar to okonomiyaki sauce. You can use tonkatsu sauce. Uh, did I say ketchup? You could use the cheese as another topping. Uh, ichimi or shichimi pepper. So this stuff, if you've had it, if you've had it before, um, you can put all kinds of things. It's pretty pretty tasty. Uh, so I think this is starting to look like it's ready to flip. So you can go ahead and dip in and then try to flip it over. Not quite yet. It's not browning. So we'll give it a little few more minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and flip everything over and then you can continue to rotate it and flip it uh, so that it evenly cooks around and uh, gives you a nice brown crust. So patience, patience. Starting to get a little crusty. So there's a little nice one right there. Try to fold in all those little bits of goodness so that it'll continue to cook. So here we have some takoyaki sauce, and I think this little needs to be opened. You can put a little bit of mayo, kiwi mayo if you'd like, a little bit of ichimi or shichimi red pepper, and additional aosako or aonori, and whatever else you'd like, but these are just about done. 
So you want to keep uh, rotating them so that they cook evenly and they get a nice little crust. Um, these didn't do so hot because I forgot the baking powder, but don't worry. Sorry. Chances are if you didn't forget it, it's, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. So once they're nice and brown on all sides, go ahead and serve. It's going to be nice and gooey on the inside, a little bit crunchy on the outside. A lot of flavor from the dashi that we use as well as the miso paste. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. So I think this one looks good. One. Two, three, four, we'll just do five for now. And put on some of this. Some of this. Katsu abushi is another topping you can put on. So here's our first little batch with the corn. Nice and crunchy. So when you put on the next batch or before you put it on, make sure to re Brush the oil onto the pan so it doesn't stick. Okay, so those are all done. And I'm just gonna get off some of this. Round two, you ready? So here we're going to be putting on our maitake. Green onions. And a little bit of the Tenkas. You could even use uh, Rice Krispies if you really wanted to for a different flavor. Similar crunch. All right, so we'll go ahead and let these go. <sighs> Yum. Just rotating these so that they get nicely crisped evenly and so that they are shaped into somewhat of a ball. So 
So it takes practice. Don't worry if you don't get complete spheres on your first try. So let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them below if you haven't already. Uh, let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more Japanese cooking videos like the one today. I wonder what we'll be making next. Hint, hint. Thank you.